goodness. Well, thank you all who were uh, sticking around after we had our technical difficulties. Okay, I'm pretty sure it was just empty. But um, today we're going to make catapults. So a fun activity, a beautiful day. You can take your catapults outside and fling things around. Um, it's going to be a good time. So... If any of you are w still with us, thank you so much for your patience. I'm sorry we had to start an hour after um, our scheduled starting time. So, but luckily catapults are something that make a lot of people happy. And I feel like after having a slight heart attack today, the ingredient or the ice so on my suggested materials i always post those in advance and on my suggested materials i kind of put a lot of things and you do not need all of those things i just like to post a lot of stuff just so in get your brain going thinking about the possibilities thinking about maybe different ways now that we're home we're inside we might not have access to a lot of stuff what kind of things we can replace other things with I said things about a million times, but you get the gist. Many materials do not have to be specific in this game. I will say the kind that we're doing today, the one specific thing you'll need is a rubber band. Although, actually, no, I have some other options, but the rubber band's really very helpful because a rubber band is great for your storing your potential energy, which we'll talk about in a second. All right, so let's build some some catapults. First, what you're going to need to do is gather your supplies. So I had wooden skewers and popsicle sticks like that on my list. But here, what we're going to do is look for some alternate options as well. So we have straws. Can you see them? We have our straws. And you're going to need six. Of whatever you're going to build your catapult with, you need six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Good number. Or you could use something like, these are actually plastic chopsticks. You could use wooden chopsticks. So you would need six of them. Or you could use, oh, I have my tea next to me and I almost spilled it. Pencils. I have these fun glitter pencils that uh, I've never used because they don't sharpen very well because they're coated in glitter. But they are good for uh, for making catapults with. And they're pretty. So you just need six of them. So one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm set here. And then, so you're going to need six of your chosen catapult construction material. Something long. Through the heart. I think we're just full. It seems to be skipping a lot today. So if you guys can hear me, let me know. If you can't hear me, also let me know. Can't see me, let me know. Just let me know. Because I feel like sometimes I'm just flying blind here. It's only our second time doing it. So we're doing our best. But we have our straws. Okay. Right, we were going to do, you need your six long, skinny things. You could use sticks from outside if they're about the same length. You could use, I don't know, what else? Kebab skewers, did I say that? Skinny things. So we have that. And you're going to need some tape. I have my pretty tape here. It doesn't have to be pretty. It just makes it more fun. And we're going to need... A rubber band and I like to have a couple of options I just dug these out of a drawer in the house so some of them always touch your rubber bands first because some of them can be prone to breaking quite easily especially if you're just digging things out of drawers because they get really stiff and break so you want to be careful because they snap and um, you don't want to get hurt so I found like this one. This is, I think, from a newspaper. And let's see. I found this one. This one you see is a little bit longer. And it still has some good stretch in it. I think that'll work. I think this is the same thing. This one's a little skinnier. 
It's kind of more your standard rubber band size, which works out really well. And uh, that's kind of what you're aiming for. I will show you one that you don't really want to use. These are more skinny ones. The other some you want to use um, would be like something like this. Your giant thing. It's just really hard to stretch if you compare it. So this is like our ideal. And then this is like what we found in the cupboard. So you want something kind of long and really, really stretchy. See how long that can stretch? That way you can really get a good range on your, um, oh, I'm sending things flying already, um, on your catapult. Whereas this, you can't, it's a lot harder to stretch. Take my word for it. It's not that. And um, you can use it if you just, if this is all you have and you kind of just want a really short burst of energy, but um, not ideal. So I'm going to put my rubber bands to the side. I've acquired those. So let's see. We have our tape. We have this. Oh, one more important thing that we'll need. We'll need something to hold whatever it is we're launching. So my recommended method is with a spoon. I'm using plastic spoons. If you have permission from your parents, you might use a, you know, regular spoon. Or if you don't just lying around, you can also grab something like a little bottle cap thingy, the top of a water bottle, and then just, we'll just tape it. Let me make like a little loop of tape. Oh, I folded it down. Man, all the technical difficulties today, you know. Pop it on the back, pop it on a stick, or in this case, a plastic butter knife. Just pop it on there, and there you go. You have something you can stick stuff into. That's long, because it'll give you more um, range of movement. So, there you go. There are my suggested items. Once everything is constructed, then we'll talk about what kind of things we might be interested in launching. So you need some long things, approximately the same size. You need a spoon-like object or something that you've taped to the thing. The thing I will say about, so this one is just the cap off of, I think, a spray bottle, is that I think, compared to a spoon, see how shallow my spoon is? I think is a little bit high so maybe when something goes to launch from it it might get caught so things to think about but I would say experiment because that's what this project is all about right there's never a perfect catapult there's just a fun catapult so here we go I'm going to I think I'll do should we do pencils or straws what do you guys think what would you like to see first pencils or straws they each have their own enjoyable factors. Do you have any comments? The one thing I will say about straws is that they are good to bend into one another. So it's like adds a second layer in addition to your tape of kind of sturdiness, but they are a bit flimsier than, than uh, pencils. Everything has its own properties, you know? So let's maybe, let's do, let's do straws. We're feeling edgy today. All right. So I have my six straws. Let me just double check again. One, two, three, four, five, six straws. And these are bendy straws. So you want to keep your bendiness in mind wherever you, um, when you're constructing your, your stuff. So step one, what we're going to try to construct out of our straws is a triangular pyramid. So what's a triangular pyramid? It's a shape where all the sides are, you guessed it, triangles. So first we're going to start by making one triangle. This triangle will be the base of our cap. Here we go. We have... How many sides does a triangle have? Three. So we need three straws. Put the others to the side for now. We have three straws. And what I like to do when I'm doing with straws, so 
basically what you're doing is you're taping, you can tape your triangle together. If you were using pencils, you would grab three of them. You would make, oops, they're on the loose. You would make three of them at each of the corners to make your three. So it's an equilateral triangle. Each of the sides is equal to the other. They're all exactly the same. But we can do another cool thing when we use our straws. And that is we can squish them inside of each other. So I like to use where the bendy part is as the corner of my triangle. So here's the bottom of my triangle. And I have this part kind of bent up so I know where it is. Grabbing my next one. And I'm kind of bending it a little bit. Grabbing my other one. But I know where everything is. So I'm going to take my long straight part and I'm going to slide it in there. Now how do you slide it into the short part of your thing? You can just squish. Pinch the end, give it a good squish, and kind of fold it up into a V. If you find this part a little bit, see how it's kind of squished and folded and now it can kind of scoop in to your other um, to your other straw. But if you find that hard, what you can also do is scissors and pretend here, we've got our long side. If you don't like to squish, you can just kind of clip the end. Oh, this makes it seem so much harder. I'm just like, boop. So I clipped the corner. So now it's kind of a pointy thing. It gives the same effect as the squish, but it's a clip. So, depending on how you, skilled you are with your scissors, there you go. Alright, but I so I squished the end of this one. This was the first one. So I have my long... long side. This is my bottom. Long always is going to go into short in this. So I have my long, I want to put it into my short. So I'm just taking it and squishing it right in there, give a little wiggle, and push. There you go. It's pretty pushed in there. Do you see how it's pushed in there now? Maybe if I back up a little bit, it'll focus. But it's pretty pushed in there. Don't worry about it being perfect because we're gonna squish it all at the end to like try to make our sides more equal triangles. Now, so I have one side. I have the base of my triangle. I have one side of it. Now we've gotta add our other side. So we're going to take our long part. This is the one we clipped, so I'm not going to squish it. But you can either clip or squish, depending on what you want to do. And then we're going to slide it into our short part, just like this. Oof. See how it just slid right in there? You can kind of see the difference between the blue straw and the green straw. And then my short part is kind of has a little tail but it's not I'm just gonna bend it the other way because it's just a straw and guess what we're gonna slide our short into our long and I didn't squish or clip this side I think I'm maybe I'll clip this side that worked out pretty well so I just made another diagonal kind of little clip just like that just so it has a pointy edge that's easier to slide in so I'm taking it and I'm sliding it and sometimes you just got to give it a little nudge with your fingernail and just squish together. Now our goal here is, as I said before, to make sure all of our sides are the same length. So you can kind of look at it. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, but you know, you want it to be pretty perfect. I think all of my sides are looking reasonably good. This side might be a little long. What do we think? I think it's pretty good and I'm just kind of messing around with it. But we have our triangle and see how easy that was? We haven't even used any tape yet. But if you And this is how I would recommend if you're taping. Take your edge, take your tape, goodness. And you want to put it right on top like this you can wrap it around a little bit if you want on top on one side 
then go to the other side. And you don't want it to be perfectly secure yet because you still need a little wiggle room to make sure that your side thing. So see how like I can kind of still kind of squish it a little bit. I'm being very gentle because I don't want it to get too crazy. So we take that and we would take our next pencil and we would do the same thing. So turn it, here we go. Do your back or my front, depending on where you are <laughs> with the screen. And then oh, I want that kind of close because I was not paying perfectly attention. Just kind of get some tape on there. We're not striving for perfection. I don't think we've ever stri strove for perfection. In Sometimes it just feels like we're doing our best. All right, last corner. So we've taped two corners. Last corner. Now we can kind of figure out where approximately those would line up. Do the same thing, place our tape on one side, grab another little short piece of tape, place our tape on the other side. And there you go. You should have your triangle, and if you can, I'll pull it back, you can see that each side is approximately the same length. Now, if any of your corners are Loosey goosey, so we could kind of finagle things and make sure that our last one fit in perfectly. Then just kind of go back in with a little bit more tape and reinforce where you think you might need more. So I feel like this corner is looking a little flimsy. I'm gonna put another piece there. This one, so you can kind of move it all around a bit. I'm just gonna reinforce that. I'm not sure how much it'll really matter, it just makes me feel better. So I'm going to do that, and now, look, none of that wiggling. So one's our pencil base, one's our straw base. Now, what do we need to do? Well, our goal is we're making a, a triangular pyramid. So that's a 3D shape where each side is a triangle. So we'll go back to our straw. I'm going to put this to the side for now. I'm gonna grab my other straws. Now, what are we gonna do? You can't hear me. Can anyone else not hear? Hmm. I don't know what's going on with Facebook today. I'm so sorry. I'll just keep kind of gesturing. Oh, great. What a time. I'm glad you can hear it now. <laughs> All right, well, we'll just try today. Today's at least cat, uh, catapults are pretty visual, right? So we have our base, we have our other three. What we're gonna be doing is we're making a, ultimately, I'll just show you kind of the idea, is that we're going to be making a pyramid. So each one, oh my goodness, <laughs> meet in the middle. Without them secured down, it's just not right. But so basically, we've got a general idea. Oh, I'm glad that you guys can hear. All right, here we are. What I would suggest doing with this is, before you fix anything to your base, if you're doing it with straws, I would connect two of your straws. So just like what we did before with the base, take your short bendy bit, you can see, here I'll bend it. You can see how this is our long. Remember, long always connects to short in this one at least. So I'm going to clip my edge, choop, just like that. And then I'm gonna scoop it into my short, just like that. Sometimes the top gives you a little bit of trouble, but you just kind of push it down a little bit, scoop it right in. Done. So do you see how the green and the red are connected now? Now what you're gonna do is once you have it, what you ideally want are these sides to be the same length. So if you see, so this is where my bendy side is. If I straighten that out, do you see how one side is much longer than the other side? Like way, way, way longer. We don't want that. So we need our scissors. I guess that's it. I didn't tell you guys to grab those, but that's part of it. So we're gonna need scissors 
and we're going to cut off right here just so they're pretty they're even so i'm going to keep it folded i'm going to look at my green one and i'm just going to snip that went flying so you have two sides that are the same if you were doing this with a pencil you would take your two pencils and why don't we connect a eraser side to this side all right you would take your two sides and connect them I just find it easier to connect them kind of when things are more separate rather than attaching them to the base and then connecting them I struggle a little bit with that so I think that this is a more efficient method are any of you guys making catapults at home Mm -hmm. All right, let's see. We've connected it, but it's still a little wiggly. That's good because we don't know the exact length of our base. Well, just eyeballing it. So we have our two triangle tops. I'm going to put the pencil one back with the pencils. We're going to go back to this one. Now, what we're going to do is we need to connect our, okay, here's our base triangle part here's our base here's our triangle we want to connect these to the insides I'm trying to get a good in, of our corners we want them to be flush or to be like right at the bottom so nice and flat just like that so what we're going to do is the same thing like that we were doing with our pencils we're going to go in and this is the first time in pups or in straw time that we need our Tape. So grab a couple pieces of tape. The way I like to connect it is, all right, here we go. Here's a good angle. So see how it's inside? It's inside your base triangle. You want to keep it kind of flush so it's like there, but it's not going out too, too far. And I like to just put a piece of tape right on top first, just to kind of give me that length just like this so can you see there's a there's a piece on that outer corner on the outside then I'm gonna keep kind of holding that but now that it's helping me hold on to it I'm going to grab my other piece of tape and I'm gonna put it on and can we get a good angle there we go this side so the inside so I'm going to put it there I'm gonna kind of curve my tape around and if you're like this is hard because the tape can be tricky just put some more tape on this all good all right see how pretty secure that is just using two pieces of tape if you feel like you need more tape put more tape on you want that to be pretty secure but it doesn't have to be super secure just yet here and we want to connect our other one to our other triangle, the other end. So in the same way, I'm going to flip it around. We're going to bring it inside our triangle. We're going to make sure that it's pretty flush with the bottom, that it's not sticking out too far. We're going to take a piece of tape. We're going to stick it on top and around the outer part and kind of just fold it like that. Just like so we're gonna turn it around and we're gonna put a piece of tape on the inside that one might have been too short of a piece of tape but you never know so there we go so there's our relatively secure corner we can add more after we've put our third side on but remember what we're making is a triangular pyramid does this look like a pyramid yet no we're missing our final straw. Now, our straw here is going to be, since we still have, is longer than the other sides. But we want all of the sides, so every single side, to be exactly the same length. So what we're going to do is, I wonder if I just like move you guys down a little. Maybe you can see the, no, I don't think that helped. <laughs> I don't think it helped. 
but there we go. Okay, so we're going to clip off where our bendy part is. And I'm right, so see how, here's my short side. Here's my long side. I'm gonna, and here, see how there's the pleated bendy part? I'm gonna clip off right there. So the, the pleated bendy part is still connected to the short side. We're getting rid of all of that. Give it a clip, toss that to the side. You don't need it right now. Maybe save it to launch it later, you don't know. And you should just have your nice straight straw. Secure it in place. So to secure our straight straw right in place, we need to tape it to the bottom and we're gonna then we're gonna also tape it to the top. So the same way we've been doing all of the other ones, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our straw, we're gonna take our corner, and this is the inside corner, see how everything's pointing that way. And we're going to put a piece of tape over the top. I'm very finagly, but I promise it's worth it in the end. So we're going to put this over the top and then we're going to put our other piece of tape right down over here. So we have our tape on one corner and now see how everything is attached to our base? We're almost done. We almost have our pyramid. We just have to secure it right at the top. Take our tape and do the same thing. I like to just tuck my long side into that bend that we made with our first straws. See how they're connected because one's inside the other. So I like to just kind of tuck it in there. And don't go and then grab my piece of tape, fold it the same way, right over the top like that. Fold another piece right over here. And we have our structure. So we have our triangular pyramid. Now, once we have all that, congratulate yourself. You did basically most of the work already. There are only a few more. There's only actually, yeah, a few more steps. All right, what we need and you could have, you would have done that the same with your with your pencils. Just keep taping until you get your pyramid. So what we're gonna do now is we have to. I'm gonna use a, a straw, or this isn't a straw. This is a spoon, and I'm gonna attach it to a straw. But in order to do that, we're gonna come in and guess what we're gonna do on this one too? We're going to cut off that bendy part. So wherever the end of that bendy part is, we're cutting on the long side. Leave the bendy part to the short part. So just go in and clip. There we go. We have our, 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 our uh, straight, Man, I am blank today. Our straight straw. But we need to affix our spoon to it. And we're gonna do that. I'm gonna put this to the side for a second by just taping it on. So here's our straw, here's our spoon. Take the back of your spoon and just push it against your straw. And then we're gonna wrap some tape. Now, what you wanna be sure to do is you wanna wrap your whole straw thing. So what I like to do, not that I'm saying you have to keep winding and winding and winding. That's excess. But I just want tape at the top is because see how like your spoon will like bend away from it. It'll still work, but it it's more likely to break and fall apart. So you want to also secure the bottom. So I like to just go in and wrap some tape right around that bottom part. And then I'm going to go in and wrap some tape around the middle just because I feel like it adds a little bit of sturdiness to my structure. So we have this. Oh, can you see it? Just tape wrapped around a straw with a spoon at the top. So it's like a 
spoon, you know? Okay, now we have to attach it to our pyramid. So to attach to our pyramid, what we're gonna do is find one of your sides, so one of your top sides, and you wanna point that toward you. So instead of having a flat side face you, you want a pointy side to face you. So you want a pointy side facing you. And then you're gonna take your long, you're gonna slide it in on the other side. Here, wait, maybe if I do this from the side, it'll make more sense. Okay, so if I have a flat side facing me, I'm gonna take my straw and slide it through one of the triangles. See how it's just right in one of the triangles? And you wanna tape it, the end of it, to this, to one of these corners. So it's gonna go through a triangle and connect to a bottom corner on the base. So, I don't know, I always find tricky taping this on, but we've got it. You want your, you wanna make sure your spoon is facing up and not facing down, or it won't be able to hold anything. So you want it up so you can balance things in it. Make sure it's pretty flat. Make sure the end of your straw is in your corner and pop your tape on. Can you guys all hear me okay? Is everything working out? <laughs> you guys see? I feel like it keeps glitching. Does it keep glitching on yours, on your end? So when I'm taping it on the bottom, I'm putting tape. I want it to kind of have some movement so this part doesn't have to be extra secure. This isn't like the other corners where they're not going to move at all. Oh, okay. I'm glad, Olivia. So I put tape kind of coming from the bottom and onto the straw. And then I'm going to put just a piece of tape. What you really want is your tape from the at the bottom because otherwise, and then kind of slide it along. You don't need too much tape here because you want to still have movement. So like, make sure you can still move your launching device. Oh, okay. So my spoon is upright. Give it a wiggle if it's not perfectly flat. Seems good. And then to go in, grab your rubber band. And wait a minute, did I forget part of this? My rubber band goes here. Oh, I know what I forgot. I forgot to tape my rubber band to the top. All right, so you're gonna have your rubber band here. If you see how I just put my rubber band right through my spoon and then right over the tippy top of my pyramid, just like that. And then to keep this, take another piece of tape, and just tape it down. You just need to tape just on the, this edge. You just want the back edge of the rubber band in place. You don't wanna put tape on a lot of the other rubber band parts cause then it won't stretch as well. And that's kind of the whole point. So now we have our catapult, congratulations. And now all we have to do is figure out how to launch it. So what's happening with our catapult? Well, I wonder if there's a good, here we go. When I, you wanna have it on a flat, like a table, or I recommend doing this outside, it's a lot of fun, and it's a beautiful day outside. So I would recommend doing it on something like a sidewalk or something flat and hard. So maybe not, you could try it in the grass, but I think it'll work better not on the grass. I think something flat. And you just grab whatever it is you want to launch. There are all kinds of things you can use. What do we have? This is a piece of paper. I just balled up a little piece of paper. You can experiment with size and density. And then you, you just make sure it's small enough that it'll balance on your... I think I made it too big. Let's take it, let me rip it in half again. This is just a piece of junk paper. And uh, roll it right into a little ball. 
I'm going to squish this one down so it's a bit dense. Remember, when you are using a catapult, always face it away from yourself. You do not want to launch, and anybody else. You don't want to launch stuff in anybody's face or anywhere. That would be horrible. So I have my spoon is facing. Wherever the curve of your spoon is facing, that's the direction that your material is going to go. So whatever it is you're launching, wherever your spoon is facing, that's what direction it is. So I would not want the spoon to be facing me because then it would launch in my face and that would be deeply unpleasant. Theoretically, I could have the spoon facing you. But then you can't really see what's going on. So I'm going to have it face into the corner. I have a lamp over there. I can try to hit that. So I have my teeny piece of paper. Let's see if it'll balance this time. What I also recommend are trying soft like um, cotton balls or, I don't know, what do we usually, we usually do some sort of, oh, look, it balances. So <laughs> look around the house. See what you have permission to launch. I like using cotton balls. Also, cotton balls you can kind of pull apart and make smaller balls. And... I don't know, I have so much just random stuff next to me. So what you're going to do, how to launch, you're going to hold one hand on the base. Oh, on the base, I'm going to reload your thing. You know what I think it is? I think that this rubber band, see this is the other reason why you don't want a really short rubber band, because the shorter the rubber band, the, um, the steeper your thing is. So like, let's see. Is this longer than that? I think it is. I'm going to try a longer one because this is having a difficulty. And that's the fun of just digging in the closet. Ooh, how long is this one? This one might be too long, I think. I think that one's a bit stretched out. So I'm going to put it right back where that other one was and just kind of put that tape back and keep this at the top. You can even scooch your rubber band part down on your spoon and it'll go lower. So for example, when I have it up here, see how it's higher? And then when I have it down here, it kind of goes a little lower. It's hard to tell, but it does. I have it about there. I don't know. Experiment at home. Follow your heart. So what I'm going to do is take my little thing, hold the base, load up my spoon, push it back. Oops. You know, you, we might need more than one. Push it back. Hmm, I think that our rubber band is sturdier than our straw. When I tried this earlier, I think I used a different rubber band. Let's see. Maybe if we just add a second straw here, I think it'll work better. Let's just tape another straw on. Because why not, you know? What a day this has been. Are any of you guys out enjoying the sunshine? It is like gorgeous outside. Okay, here we go. Now, now we have it up here. Is this a different one? Yeah, see how this one like bends easier than this one? This one would be too strong. We're just gonna go for it. I'm gonna put this up here, load it up, pull back, and fling! <laughs> It's deeply satisfying. So I encourage you to find different things, different ways you can make it into a game. So when you take it outside, what you can do is you can draw like X's in chalk and see, or lines, and see if you can get it to go past that. Maybe a little smaller. Or you can also see if you can land it in things. So I just happen to have, let's see hummus container. It's clean. Actually, this is maybe less than clean. I have this hummus container that's definitely clean. And you just want to put it wherever you, wherever you want your goal to be and see if you can try to get stuff in there. So I'm going to like scooch. I have my thing. I have this. You know, it almost made it. But anyway, yeah. Just Thank you so much for all your patience today. I really appreciate you, appreciate you guys sticking around. I know it was a tricky, a tricky time. How many of you guys are going to go and make cat, uh, I almost said cantaloupe, catapults?
it for today. I think that there are a lot of different ways you can make cat, uh, catapults and play with them outside. So I will sign off. Oh wait, before I leave, I wanted to show you. If you don't have rubber bands, you could also use the other things that kind of store your potential energy. So see how this opens and whatever will open and then snap close. Be careful of your fingers. You can kind of figure out how to make that into a mechanism where you can flick something and make it fly. So play around with things. I will see you guys next week at 2 p.m. And we're going to be learning how to play Mancola and making our own Mancola boards. And it's going to be really fun. It's one of my favorite games to play as a kid. So, oh, I'm so glad <laughs> that Carlos and Felipe are flinging stuff. Okay, well, I will see you guys next week. Bye-bye.